Hey there everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in again for another weekly update on news and information about DCS World. I'm your host, of course, Prickly Hedgehog. I hope you're doing well wherever you are. Uh, a little apology here for the delay, uh, or the delay at least, in the video this week. A little bit later than typical. Uh, I had some work I had to do that I wasn't expecting to do at work, and then I bumped into a colleague I haven't seen in many, many months. And we obviously shot the breeze for a while about life in general and work and stuff, and that's what happens when you uh, don't get to work with people like you know that anymore that you used to enjoy working with you want to catch up and see how things are going so it's kind of fun to do but anyway that made a delay so i apologize for that but here we go let's delve into this week's newsletter and what equal dynamics has got going on this week now they ended the newsletter this week with a reference to 2.7 remember this is the big patch moving ahead at some stage which is going to mark a milestone and changes in the game primarily we're looking here at the volumetric clouds and maybe an aircraft introduction i'm not 100 percent certain on that and i know a lot of you are very excited about the volumetric clouds one of the reasons i want to bring this uh, to attention at the beginning because it reminded me too that this time last year we also had the introduction of 2.5.6 and if many of you remember, <laughs> like me, while it was a great introduction of some really cool things like the new lighting in the cities and ambient lighting at night and stuff like that, we also had uh, water transparency changes. And again, very nice aesthetic introduction of some really cool stuff. It also led to some problems down the track that Eagle Dynamics had to um, work fixing. Uh, we saw quite a few bugs. And at that point, there were many, many regular patches, almost weekly patches that we were getting... Um, um, you know, injected into the game but of course ultimately that created some issues that Eagle Dynamics had to turn around and uh, rectify because of you know, uh, pushback from the community and so they've done a good job since then of being a little bit more cautious about throwing out random updates and that a lot of the updates have kind of for want of a better term been vetted if you like before they get introduced they've had time to go over them make sure that they are, they are much more functional than what they perhaps were previously so um, quality rather than quantity is really the simple way of explaining it. So on that basis, I don't think we're going to see similar issues with 2.7. Um, I hope. I think um, the lessons have been learned and, and you know, mistakes rectified. So 2.7 is going to be a very exciting update. Now they've said here explicitly that they have basically they're all out right now working into uh, making sure this patch is hopefully able to be released by the end of March. So a little bit away away yet. Uh, about a month maybe five weeks hopefully uh, less but we'll see what happens timelines are as they said at the very beginning of the year not necessarily set in concrete so don't get too upset that's uh, the nature of the beast but yeah i know like many of you i'm really excited about the volumetric clouds in fact some people are so excited <laughs> i don't think a week goes by if i mention clouds and somebody just writes in clouds in the comment section below uh, we'll see how many of you do it this week um Cool. I'm looking forward to the clouds. I'm sure all of you are. I think a couple of things about clouds. One of obviously it's going to make a lot of uh, sense in terms of immersion. Um, it's going to make a lot of sense in terms of aesthetic and um, features, which is uh, makes the game more realistic. And as a result of that, also it's also I think going to have an impact on things like planning because um, if you do have stormy weather or large um, clouds, then uh, you know, even though fighter pilots are a lot more visual in terms of being able to see out and have that visual awareness, uh, factor, situational awareness, the uh, planning component of it is going to have to be, well, if there's a huge bank of clouds here, I may not just be able to fly through it randomly. If there's a mountain on the other side, I'm going to have to be a little bit more cognizant of where I'm flying my aircraft rather than just relying on the fact that the, the clouds are pretty wispy in Eagle Dynamics' environment right now. That's probably going to change a little bit. At least that's what I hope. And so that, like I said, it creates an aesthetic, it creates an immersion, and it creates some, some challenges in terms of planning and where I'm flying, what I'm doing in those clouds, which I think is really cool. All right, enough on that. What else have we got? Well, big changes coming up for the Hornet. Now, they're very, very much desperate to get this out of early access, and it might be a surprise for a lot of people, but the Hornet actually isn't out of early access yet. Although it's been around for several years now, um, 
they're still working on quite a lot of the features. It's a pretty sophisticated aircraft. Um, it does have a lot of very interesting uh, systems in it. And obviously, when you have sophisticated equipment in the real world that are computer-generated things, you then have to recreate them to um, a standard that makes them appear realistic in the game, and that can be challenging. Some things seem to come easy, it seems, and other things uh, don't quite work out. Sometimes you get these conflicts too, and um, you've got many, many sub-menus that you're kind of uh, working through. So, um, you know, Eagle Dynamics has had their work cut out with them uh, for them in this uh, particular aircraft. But overall, I would say... <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice is really uh, suffering right now. I've been doing too much talking today. Dark Ale. Oh yeah, Dark Ale. That sometimes helps. <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not, but anyway, I'm lying to you. I didn't think it did help. Anyway, it tasted good though. Uh, let's move on. So yeah, like I said, they've 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 had their work cut out for them with this particular aircraft. No question about that. But I I rate it pretty highly. I think it's a fun aircraft to fly. Um, it poses a lot of interesting challenges. It's easy to fly in some ways, and in other ways, it can catch you out as well. Um, it has um, um, you know such a pointy nose. You can get into some pretty high high angles of attack, and then you have to be very careful that you you know don't stall it. And I found myself pirouetting quite a few times, really, really banking on angles and pointing the nose and then forgetting to actually check the altitude. And uh, especially when you're over the sea, it can be very deceptive. Suddenly you realize, hold on, I'm, uh, I'm about to crash because, you know, you've been, you've been banking and yanking, so to speak, to uh, bring the nose on target, which it will do. But of course, at the expense, obviously, of energy and uh, that can be costly. So, so it has its own little quirks and challenges and uh, all the aircraft do. But uh, other than that, this is a, actually an easy aircraft to fly, but it, it does pose some really cool things and uh, will pose some really cool challenges and has some cool things about it that uh, make it, you know, a little different from some of the other aircraft, even in, say, the, the Viper, which has a lot of similarities, but uh, they're just completely different beasts. All right, so they're saying here, well, the next open beta patch, they uh, plan to include several new Hornet features, and that is going to include things like the pre-briefed PB mode for the harm, to include both HRM and AC submodes, self-protect pullback mode for the harm, and it looks like a harm override here, improved harm uh, targets of opportunity handoff for two emitters at once, they've adjusted AGM, ADHC harm flight and seeker dynamics, the ATFLIR targeting pod, complete remaining lightning targeting pod tasks, TDC slew, wide acquisition or WAC, ACM mode, WACQ, WAC, and then raid single target track or STT mode, and then spot radar mode, and then saving PRF to set options, bra indication, bra indication with L and S. I'd have to look that up. I don't know what that means. Holy cow! Uh, and then also new elevation tracking model to resolve the joint uh, helmet mounted queuing system designation drift or JHMCS. I think I said that right. I hope that acronym is correct. Correct me if I'm wrong. So cool stuff there. Like I said, uh, many of you are probably unaware that it's still in early access, but their aim is to try to bring this thing out of early access this year. And the benefit of that, of course, is that once they're finished with the Hornet, or largely finished with it, then they can focus on this beast, which is the Viper, which is also getting updates. Now, they have uh, their team of dedicated engineers assigned full-time to the Viper, and they're currently working on the following. Updated flight model dynamics for constant G and drag index for Cat 1. That sounds really interesting. Addition of IAM weapons that include JDAM, JSAL, and WCMD. We have, of course, like the Hornet here, the pre-briefed PB mode for the AGM 88C harm. So you can see some conjunction work there between the two aircraft because of similarities, which they have mentioned in the past, which is cool. Um, important development items remaining include the following. Obviously, air-to-ground radar, which is going to be very handy uh, and add a lot more layers to the aircraft in terms of what you can do with it. Uh, the Cirrus page, uh, the JHMCS air-to-ground mode. The harm targeting system, or HTS, electronic countermeasures, and it's going to be interesting. I'm really fascinated what they're considering with electronic countermeasures. I saw some interesting stuff from Ralphie Dude, who did some experiments with the effectiveness of electronic countermeasures as they currently stand in the game. So, cool stuff. Anyway, and more, which is unnamed. So that pretty much wraps up, really, the major updates. There was... A small patch this week and it just covered i won't go through them just for brevity's sake but it just covered some 
nice little fixes to some of the campaigns, little minor bugs. Not an extensive list this week, as you notice. If you haven't updated the game yet, you'll find it's a, not a huge patch. So don't get excited and think the clouds are coming. Like I said at the beginning of the video, those are still in um, uh, in the pipeline. And uh, this week's update was just, I say minor fixes, because not everything's minor, but um, uh, they are fixes for various campaigns and other bits and pieces. Um, both in uh, Flaming Clush 3 and also some of the, uh, like I said, the campaigns and things. So a little plug here for Operation Pontus. I haven't uh, purchased this campaign. Let me know if you are flying it and what it involves. It looks pretty cool. This is from Baltic Dragon, remember, who's done some neat campaigns, uh, including the Raven 1 campaign. Operation Pontus is basically a 30 mission. Uh, the total number of the missions is actually uh, based on your success rate. And um, it's a story-driven campaign for the Hornet, obviously. And as the commanding officer, you will plan, design, and execute demanding missions for your squadron. The campaign has day and night missions, ooh, with different weather conditions, ooh, against an intelligent and adaptive enemy. Nice. So, you have dynamic briefings and sit reps, decision-making and planning, over a thousand voiceovers, creating a dynamic environment. My voice isn't in there, unfortunately. And full use of DCS Supercarrier. So every decision counts. Start him up. Launch him. So very cool stuff there with that campaign. Let me know if you're flying it and what you think of it. I haven't uh, gotten around to getting that one yet. I've got too many other campaigns I'm working on right now. I think I'm working on about three of them. Uh, right now I'm on, what am I doing? Raven 1. I'm doing the Iron Heel with the F-14 and, and also the Zone 5 from uh, Reflected Simulations, which I've been enjoying as well. Uh, lots of stuff going on. And I'm also working on a video for one of the video competitions coming up from Grim Reapers. I'm hoping to be able to get that uh, video done in uh, in a timely fashion before I think that the competition ends in March, um, which is disappointing in some ways because I don't think that means the clouds will be ready to, to include in the video and stuff as well. So uh, if uh, that's something you're interested in, let me know because I can point you in the right direction. But uh, uh, Grim Reapers, if you look, do a Google search of Grim Reapers, um, DCS that'll bring you to their page and there is a, uh, a link on there for the competition then the various um, rules and regulations regarding that looks pretty straightforward I think there's a couple of different um, genres that you can contribute a short video to if that's your bent and I know that there's some very talented people out there but I thought I'd give it a go and just see what happens and I don't care if I come nowhere or just it'll just be fun to submit something and, and you know have a little tinker it uh, appeases my creative side which I don't always get to use so all right, I think that'll do for this week. Just a shorter update, like I said. Again, I hope everybody's doing very well. Don't forget to support the channel by liking and subscribing. It keeps the channel chugging along. Of course, if you want to contribute to the channel in some small financial way, obviously I do have a Patreon page right now. Thanks again to those Patreons that have already, already contributed. Uh, again, the link will be in the description below if you're looking for that. Once again, I just want to thank everybody for all the support on the channel. Uh, putting up with my voice today and the delay in the video again i hope you're all doing very well uh very well excuse me see i'm suffering and um that uh, you have some time to fly this weekend so carry on flying stay safe everybody this is prickly hedgehog out it's been fun talking with you again so we'll see you next time don't forget to comment below we'll chat and uh let's rock this dcs stuff it's fun take it easy prickly hedgehog out mm -hmm.